It's the playoffs, baby! Oh, but wait. This means no more Detroit Lions. Oh, well, that's sad. I wonder what Dan Campbell's up to. I'm just telling you right now, I'm a great spirit of <laughs> I love that for you, coach. And I love these games. Six rematches? Chino's in the playoffs? You know, Greg loves that. I love that they're playing the 49ers, the team I pick to win every single week this season. Wait, does that make me a Niners fan? Sounds like football, baby. Claybon's Ravens have a chance to knock off last year's AFC champs. And wait, does Cynthia get a ring if the Bills win? Yes. Game debut presented by Little Caesars, the official pizza sponsor of Super Bowl 57, starts now. Hey, coach, save a drink for me, and I'll bring you a slice. Hello, hello, welcome to Game Day View. Well, I want to know the answer to that, Cynthia Breeland. Do you get a ring if the Bills go all the way and do the whole thing? Come on. Come on. I need to talk to my agent. I did not negotiate that. Oh, my do it, Bill. She deserves it. <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> a ring. There's still time. Those There's sunglasses still time. alone are worthy of a ring. <laughs> <laughs> what was that scooter? And why weren't That's you Josh wearing Allen's a helmet? Scooter. That's Josh Allen's scooter, and he gave one of them to each one of his offensive linemen, and we did that in training camp, and then he got a discount because we tweeted it out. So he got the <laughs> There you go, Josh Allen. A ring she deserves a, a ring. <laughs> There you go. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at what happened last week. We had our chance, guys. Greg came out and basically had a perfect week 18. Great week. You Greg. lost only one game. He's four up on Patrick with 13 games to go. That means I think this means he gets a pizza party. <laughs> Little Caesars. <laughs> we'll hook it up. I probably should have checked with them first, but I said it. I, I've said it on li live now television now, it. so it has to happen. Yeah. Greg, any words? Any, any, I miss any pizza parties. Here? Uh, no speech. Don't try to jinx me. And don't try to say this news that I had a good week through such gritted teeth. Oh, like I'm not gritted at all. Look at we're twinsies today. I'm Ooh. just trying to get a little bit of this like uh, magical winning power to rub off. All right, let's start picking some games here. Let's start with the Seahawks Niners. San Francisco won both games in the regular season. Patrick, I'm going to start with you. Will they make it a clean sweep? This weekend. They came out and the pass rush was a real problem in that first matchup. Abraham Lucas and Charles Cross were playing in their second NFL game. Uh, Nick Bosa had five quarterback hits on Geno Smith. Then we fast forward towards the end of the season. Yes, Bosa does get one sack, but he hits Geno three times. I think having two tackles that are both young, they're going to get better. It's not like they're, they're going to be worse. I think the Seahawks do cover. Uh, but they lose 21 okay. to 24. <laughs> There's confidence in there. The, the Seahawks defense, uh, honestly, they've given up 500, almost 500 more rushing yards after contact than the 49ers have given up just plain rushing yards all season. I, I can't take the Seahawks in this one because of that defense, but I do think they get the cover. This is a much closer score than I would have right. thought. I would take that. As someone who wants good things for Geno for Smith, sure. I would take that. I don't have it as close. I have the 49ers winning this game 34-17. to 17. The thing I want Oof. most for Geno is, is time. <laughs> and, and you're right, Patrick, the tackles got better, but on the interior, that's where the problem was in the second matchup. Geno Smith had no hope, and the <clears throat> Seahawks aren't really good at the things that could possibly beat the 49ers, like quick game and screen game, and they want to throw the ball deep down the field, and Geno Smith can only get that done if they have time. Ken Kenneth Walker can only run if he has some room to operate, and I just don't expect it. Arik Armstead came back late in the season, made a huge difference. They're great with their stunts. They're just big and scary, and I don't like this. 49ers. I'm just sick of them just beating up on everyone, especially the Seahawks. I think it's a terrible match. 34-17. Such a mean score. Mine's almost as mean. I have 28-17. Mm. to 17. I think that this game is going to come down to all of the different weapons at Brock Purdy's disposal, or maybe I should say at Kyle Shanahan's disposal. And we don't really talk enough about Eli Mitchell, who Ooh. since the beginning of last season has averaged 4.2 yards after contact per rush against stacked boxes. So you've seen Brock Purdy use lots of shifts and motions. In fact, he has 12 touchdowns using those, which leads the league since week 13. And and when I'm watching this, it's like, well, now you've got Eli Mitchell as well. So mm. you got to remember, in a game where there's potentially torrential downpours and lots of bad weather, the run game is going to be even more important. We already know what Christian McCaffrey can do. So you've got the duo now of Christian McCaffrey and Eli Mitchell. Mm. So 
That's what I'm looking at. You know, since this might be the last time we get to talk about Gino on the show, and you and I have loved talking <laughs> about the Seahawks all season long, I just want to take a little walk down memory Ooh. lane. Okay, remember, I don't even remember what week it was because it feels so <laughs> long ago now. So much has happened, but the Seahawks went on a four-game winning streak. Greg, do you remember this? We were Gino this, Gino that. We were even talking about their defense at times. Mm. The Seattle Seahawks. It was fun. In this economy. It was so long ago. <laughs> and then they went to Munich and they lost to the Bucs, and it's just not been the same ever since. So I'm going to take the 49ers as well. But in the same tone as Patrick, I am keeping it a little bit closer. Thank I you. think they are going to cover. The Seahawks Me posted this, like, really wholesome post the other day. All these uh, kids from the Seahawk region uh, wrote letters and drew pictures, and one of them was just like, just try your best. Even the kids don't believe in the Seahawks. They just go out there and have fun. But the 49ers are probably going to win 27-20. Uh, or 20. Okay, it is time to play this guy or that guy. Greg, the line is one and a half touchdowns for Geno and Purdy. Who is more likely to go over? Oh. This is a fun question. Well, I'm going both are going over. No way I'm going Geno under. I think Purdy is more likely because I have them scoring 34 points. Even in the rain, he gets the ball out of his hands quickly, and I I think Kyle Shanahan will look at replacement middle linebacker for the Seahawks, Tanner Muse, and think that's the guy I'm picking on this week with passes over the middle, whether it's to George Kittle or whether it's to the running backs. He always picks one or two guys. Maybe it's Jonathan Abram. Remember the Raiders' safety now playing snaps for the Seahawks. Kyle Shannon will pick on the mismatch. Purdy gets a couple touchdowns. Uh, Cynthia Kittle went off in Week 15 against the Seahawks. Who is more likely to have over 45 receiving yards in this game, Kittle or Brandon Ayuk? He's, he said 45, and I'm saying both in this one. Ooh. Even though I do think that maybe we should talk a little bit about the secondary for the Seahawks. They could be getting a little bit healthier. They could have the safety back. Obviously, it's really better for them if they have Ryan Neal. We have a good picture of him, like, stopping George Kittle, but I don't think that happens in this matchup. 45 yards are just too few. I think both of them surpass it. You okay, the Patrick. In this game. <laughs> you need the Lions in this game? That yes. would have been really fun. Yeah. You, but wait, it wouldn't have put up a fight. Come on, believe. Patrick, on the flip side, you've got Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf, who has over 61 receiving yards. Well, like Greg and Cynthia, I wish I could take both here, but the 49ers <laughs> are very good, uh, and I will take DK Metcalf because the way that D'Amico and the 49ers approached him in the last game, it was a lot of Jimmy Ward one-on-one, -on -one, and I think DK is more likely uh, to get one big play. Tyler Lockett, of course, open deep, a whole lot playing with nine fingers, essentially. Uh, still great, but if I had to pick one, I would take DK Metcalf in this because I think he's going to get more singled up coverage. Sin, real quick, Greg mentioned the rain. Do you have, like, a rain adjustment in your model? Does the does the model say, like, hmm, smells Not like rain, all. and then it Usually does. teams <laughs> with good defenses have the advantage in that matchup, oh, which means okay. especially defensive fronts because the, the most likely time for something bad to happen is either when the ball is snapped or when the ball is caught. So if you can stop the pass, you have a major advantage. Model's doing everything. It's doing it all, folks. Okay, uh, moving on to this next game. Back in week three, the Jags blew the doors off the Chargers, 38-10. to 10, The biggest win for Jacksonville in five seasons. Wow. That's actually crazy. The offense had over 400 yards, held the Chargers to a season-low 26 yards rushing in what was also one of Justin Herbert's worst games of the season. Uh, it's time to talk who's punching their ticket, presented by Ticketmaster. Uh, Patrick, the Chargers are favored in a close one on Saturday night. Do you agree with the desert here? I do not agree with the desert here. <laughs> okay. I think the marquee player for me in this game is going to be Travis Etienne. He's having a great season, uh, over 5.1 yards per carry. You know who else is having a great season running the football? Who? Literally anybody playing the Los uh. Angeles Chargers. They have given up <laughs> 5.4 yards per carry this season. Barry Sanders only hit that, that number once in his career. <laughs> NFL don't, MVP don't seasons by Terrell Davis, Emmitt Smith, LaDainian Tomlinson, they never hit 5.4 yards per carry. Essentially, you're a Hall of Famer if you're playing the 2022 mm. Los Angeles Chargers at the running back position. I have uh, the Jags winning by two in a fun game, but if you can't stop the run, I'm not going to pick you on the road in the playoffs. You know what happens when you can run the ball really effectively? What's that? You can use play action really effectively, too. And you know what the key for our quarterback, his hair is so beautiful, <laughs> Trevor Lawrence, <laughs> it's play action. When play action has been working for him, that has been like this trick, the secret, and that's been how they've been 
each game, it seems like it's a different pass catcher that they're targeting. Sometimes it's Christian Kirk, sometimes it's Evan Ingram, but ultimately it is the play action, especially missing their left tackle. Obviously, pressure is going to be a big factor. In that last matchup, they didn't necessarily have to see as much of a Bosa. He did not play that game or he left early from that game with an injury. But I think if you can keep it nice and easy, that's how the upset mm. happens. One mm. point up, one, just one. I don't this really like is the hair battle. It's not, right. it's not just Trevor Lawrence. It's Justin Herbert. They've it. all got. I mean, you and it's Trevor hair-wise well. have some similarities, and that's a compliment, you know, Thank to you. both of you. That really is. Really, I, I, uh, I, I feel complimented. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I am taking the Chargers in this game. It's partly out of self-interest. I don't want to hear all off-season that Mike Williams' injury, he's uh, not playing in this game, is the I'm reason the Chargers. I just good. can't deal with the discourse. So I want to imagine a word <laughs> that Justin Herbert overcomes it all and you know what he can do it he is the chosen one you look at Trevor Lawrence and people think he's the god right he's the number one overall pick Trevor Lawrence he does all the things well no Justin Herbert's been a better player since the moment he entered the league in a matchup like this where I don't think there's much separating these two teams similar defenses similar offenses I'm going with Justin Herbert I choose him Rachel chose him before the season when she was looking for a Don't team. Don't bring me into this. He can do special things on the move in a way that I don't think Lawrence can. He wouldn't have just had one first down in his last five drives like the Jaguars did a week ago. I trust Justin Herbert to save us from a terrible discourse all off. Some may say Trevor Lawrence has overcome more in the last season. The coach he had mm -hmm. last season, he's younger. Greg, I was with you this morning, but I've changed my mind. There you picked is. the Chargers before it's the season. So I've changed my mind. Yeah. It is now a <laughs> – Greg, I'm, I'm going to Jags, 27 to 24. They've been so fun the last few weeks watching these guys. Uh, I know that um, Trevor Lawrence has improved a lot. Right before the bye, he kind of started making these changes. He's looked way better. He's also matured. I was watching him in, like, a post-game presser last week, and I was just like, he has, like, grown – Five years in the last 12 months. He's going to lead his team here, 27 and 24. The first playoff game in Jacksonville since 2017. You love to see it. Okay, coming up after the break, we are talking Bills, Dolphins. I'm actually quite excited for this game. It was pretty close a couple weeks ago when we watched it. Both Different times they played, they were classics. Now. Let's run it back. Let's run it back, baby. I'm still thinking about how much people are going to drink in Jacksonville. <laughs> I mean, that's going to be a party. Oh, yeah, Bill. Lots of fun. Don't go anywhere. You ready? I got your back. Hey, see these trophies that I hang on? That's why I'm the king of the hill. Buffalo running up with the pills. Cold world like a record. On the line to Stephon Diggs. What a connection. Backyard play. There you go, Jay. Throws it downfield looking for Diggs. He's in the end zone. Wow. I just love this guy, man. <laughs> it's time for more or less. Patrick, we're starting with you. Josh Allen had over 300 yards in both games against the Dolphins. FanDuel has his number at 260 and a half. What say you? More uh, if, if it was crazy bad, obviously I would take more. <laughs> but the, the problem is I think that there's going to be a lot of Bills running game in this one. I will take less. Uh, the, the option here is to have mm. Josh Allen perhaps be less at risk uh, against an offense that really should struggle in, in Skylar Thompson, or perhaps there, there's a chance that we get some Teddy Bridgewater. But either way, uh, with backup quarterbacks, the Dolphins have not uh, been what they have been with Tua. I'm taking less uh, for Josh Allen. Okay, up next, Stefan Diggs had 100 yards in two of his three career playoff games at Highmark Stadium. Will he have more than 79 and a half yards against Miami? I am going to go more here because I don't know what's on the other side of this pillow. Also because it's Stefan Diggs. Why wouldn't you <laughs> go more with Stefan Diggs? One of the best route runners I have ever seen and he's going to be matched up a lot in this game against Xavier Howard. I watched Howard a week ago against the Jets. He was not the same Xavier Howard we are used to. He is playing through an injury clearly not at 100% and fighting through it like so much of this Dolphins team. I think Diggs picks up. 
I love that. The last two weeks without Tua, Tyreek Hill had only six catches for 78 yards. Sin, will you have more or less than 61 and a half without can Tua? You, can you give me that pillow? Oh, sure. Thank you. All right, perfect. Here we go. I'm going with more here. <laughs> Why? Because when you give Mike McDonald enough time to be able to orchestrate something great to happen, he's going to get Tyreek Hill in space. When you have Tyreek Hill in space, you got a problem. So it's less about the opportunity for with the quarterback. Yeah, that's that's not ideal. But the reality is, is if you can get some space for Hill, he can do after the catch, and he can make improbable catches. Next gen stats ranks him highest in kind of both of those metrics. So. Yes, more. Okay, love it. It's time to pick. It's time to pick the game. Greg, the spread's almost two touchdowns. Yes. Ay, ay, ay. Can Miami keep it close, or do you expect the Bills to pull away? I think the Bills win this game easy because of their <clears throat> defense and because Skylar Thompson is starting for the Dolphins. If Teddy was starting, I'd give them a it's chance. Story. Josh Allen, on the other hand, is starting for the Bills. And last week, I think he got back to world's destroyer, Josh Allen mode. It sort of got <laughs> lost in the Destroy shuffle him. because of the kickoff returns Ugh. and because the game was very competitive w when the Bills had the ball and the Patriots had the ball and everything. But Got Josh that. Allen played one of the best games I think any quarterback's played all season. Okay. He had six or seven throws in that game that were just outrageous, and it reminded me of Week 18 a year ago against the Patriots, and then the playoff run that Josh Allen went on. I think he's healthier. I think he's throwing the ball better. He's going to run the ball more, and I just do not want to get in this dude's way at this time of year. 27 to 11. Okay, so I have right now an 11-point win in this. So when I'm looking at this one, 29 to 18, I think that the Dolphins are going to have to do some YOLO things here to kind of figure out what's going on, which means we saw in their first matchup they blitzed Josh Allen a ton. We saw in their second matchup they didn't. So I think Dawson Knox, who's had a touchdown reception in four straight games, is going to be another crucial factor here because if they're going to do some wild YOLO things on this defense, then like blitz or bring an extra rusher or show some disguises, things that maybe we have and seen before like go to your resourceful outlet that guy that's been so absolutely stable for you especially over the past four games so I love Dawson Knox in this match I like a lot of people you in this matchup. Dawson Knox. I, well he scored four t uh, touchdowns in four games you're right like, too you're right yeah, too. that's right that, I'm right thank you yeah. <laughs> Cynthia is right uh, I agree with Cynthia except I'm gonna shave a couple points off that nine uh, for me in this one because uh, honestly this matchup is is depriving us of what we really enjoyed the first two times with Tua tonga yep. on the field. This is a much better football team. Severe hampering of the offense without him. And I I'm looking at a Buffalo team that's probably going to lean on that top 10 rushing attack a lot in this one. And we've seen a lot of James Cook in the past few weeks. Uh, his snap percentage has gone up every single week. He's actually out-touched Devin Singletary in week 17 and 18. Was it because it was late in the season? Was it because he's come on? He's on the field. Uh, that's all I know. I think we're going to see a heavy dose of him and Singletary as well. Maybe a little Josh Allen. Not too much, but low scoring game. Bills win at 26-17. I agree with you, Patrick. It's such a bummer that we're not able to enjoy Tua out there. He's so much fun to watch. Uh, I'm glad he's not playing, though. I'm going to take Bills 30-21. to I will say, I mean, like, you know, betting on a backup quarterback in the regular season is one thing. Betting on them in the playoffs against a Bills team that got their playoff dreams ripped away from them by a coin last season. They are going into this postseason with, like, <laughs> Like, oh, my goodness, everything that they've been through in the last two weeks and then the memory of that last season. The, I have the Bills going all the way to the Super Bowl and maybe even winning Ooh. the whole thing. They should be terrifying to everybody that they meet uh, in the next few weeks. So, Bills all the way. Go! NFC North champs. You know the Vikings came to play. Close games, last second win, still they made a way. Playoff ready, locked in if we had to play today. Minnesota, the time is right now, we can't delay. We focus for playoffs, it's safe to say. Justin Jefferson holding up major weight. Just throw it up to him, I promise he'll make a play. A highlight reel for JJ, it's a regular day. Kirk Cousins is a legend, but let me explain in case you don't want to accept it. Down 33 to the Colts, he sent the message. And 460 yards later, let his team to the biggest comeback on record. Dalvin Cook's been living up to his last name. Cooking defense, treating the field like a fast lane. Can't count on Minnesota, you should know. The Super Bowl, the Vikings only go. Let's go. Very nice. It is time for Tip of the Cap presented by New Era. Patrick, you have picked <laughs> the Vikings every week since Thanksgiving. Whoa. Every single week, Patrick has been on the Vikings. Kurt Are you going to do it Ooh. again?
Yes, I'm gonna do it again. Skull, everything. And here's something people need to understand about Kirk Cousins. People love to get jokes off. It's one of the it's one of it's Twitter's easy. favorite things to do. Yep. Jokes are good. It's not necessarily reality. The, mm. People, oh, what time's the game? Kirk Cousins is Kirk Cousins. He's going to perform. And what he did a few weeks ago when Wink Martindale was blitzing all of the time, he comes out, goes 14 to 21, or has a, over 120 passer rating, and throws two touchdowns in a comeback win in the fourth quarter. Kirk is Kirk. The Vikings win 24 to 19. They Easy. do it again. Easy. Well, I'm actually going to call for the upset here. I'm very popular in Minnesota these days. 24-23, I have the Giants winning this one. Why? Wow. Because of their pass rush. We've seen Kirk Cousins have weird results when he's pressured. What's been going on? By the way, you know Wink's going to pressure. That, that He blitzes. Like it's, it's like 45% of the time. It's, it, that's just what he does, right? But between Kayvon Thibodeau really coming on and Dexter Lawrence, who does not get enough love for being kind of right up there among the league's best, only trailing in like he may race maybe number two or number three in almost every single pressure metric that we mm. have does not get enough love does not get enough respect or admiration for him between the two of them I think it's going to be very difficult especially if their center who has been banged up and not playing especially if he's not 100% which even if he's out there I don't know if that makes makes him 100% even if he's playing mm -hmm. right I uh Sometimes try to come up with like a different point than Cynthia to like be diversified, but sometimes Cynthia just you know has I mean. the right point. And it, the I, I Giants mean, why are, are so gonna nice win. to me today. I'm, I'm like, just saying the Giants are winning it. this game, and it is because of their defensive wow, line. Two Giants <laughs> picks. I've been guilty of saying, oh, the Giants aren't that talented. They've been getting lucky. Like, look <laughs> at this defensive line. It might be the most talented defensive line in the NFL. Dexter Lawrence is an all pro. Uh, you mentioned how yeah. great Thibodeau has been. Aziz Ojolari got hurt in that first game. He's back and playing great. Like the fourth best lineman here is Leonard Williams, who's been an all-pro in the past too. And they're going against an offensive line who's let Kirk Cousins be hit more than any quarterback in the Ooh. entire NFL. He was sacked 18 times more this season than a year ago. And Kirk's great. I, I hear you, Patrick. But you don't want to just get great. brutalized. <laughs> All game long, I think it's an offensive game, and I think Danny Dimes is ready for this moment. Wow. That's okay, we're right going to play that back next week. Um, <laughs> I know Patrick made this like new rule on the show. No more jokes about the Vikings. <laughs> I was on the Vikings website this morning, and I got to say there was something that made me really laugh. The headline on the front page of the Vikings website say, experts say close game expected. <laughs> when has it not been a close game with the Vikings? When have we not expected that all season long? And I am choosing another close win Ooh. by the Vikings, 24 to 20. They are going to continue to give Minnesotans the heart attacks that they do not deserve. One good thing here, the Giants were not able to figure out Justin Jefferson the first time that they played, and hopefully they won't do it again. Jefferson had 16 targets, 12 receptions, 133 receiving yards, most receiving yards, and second most receptions allowed to a player by the New York Giants this year. That is the wrong person to let run wild all over the field, so hopefully he's able to do it again. Okay, coming up next, we are talking Ravens Bengal. Oh, Bengals. I almost <laughs> forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> Ravens Bengals. Maybe I was just like gonna stop because it's so Deja clear. Because the winner. it was last year or last week rather. Ravens Bengals, baby, coming up next. Don't go anywhere. We're playing again. <laughs> okay, it's time for pizza, pizza pregame <laughs> predictions presented by Little Caesars. <laughs> Can we? Can you show with the other people? This is Patrick a piece. Patrick walked sign. in and said, "I think this is a bread knot." I, th I thought this was a piece of crazy <laughs> bread. <laughs> like, I love crazy bread. <laughs> it's a piece sign. sign. <laughs> we had a good laugh. Okay, we all rode with the Bengals last week against the Ravens. Not sure much has changed in the last seven days, but let's check and find out, Greg. I am changing my mind that it, it's going to be close. I think this week the Ravens defense keeps the Bengals score low. It's 20 to 16. Bengals win the game. But the Ravens' defense will be the toughest matchup this Bengals' offense faces in the entire postseason. I think they are built to stop the Bengals. And what I mean by that is they have a lot of fast, rangy, athletic players in their secondary. Whether it's Marcus Williams you brought in, Kyle Hamilton, Chuck Clark, Marcus Peters is returning for this game. They have just so many different <laughs> options that they can take away the players on the perimeter. When I watched this Bengals-Ravens game a week ago, I was kind of stunned that the Ravens defense gave it to him. Now, Tyler Huntley starting a quarterback for the Ravens, we assume, and I don't think they'll score enough to keep up, and the Bengals are a great, great team, but I think this is a big-time challenge 
playing a division opponent again. So I have a seven point win, 26 to 19 in this matchup for the Bengals. I'm looking at the right side of the, o is that right? Le whatever, the right side of their <laughs> O-line where Lyle Collins isn't. And then there's even more injuries now. So when I'm looking at Joe Burrow and what's going on with the sack situation for him, people say very nicely he's turned into kind of more of a checking down quarterback, which is a, a good thing because you don't get sacked as often. Only 41 sacks in the regular season, which is down from 10, more 51 last season. So he's He's also not taking as many sacks. I just think that with this rebuilt O-line, who actually has been playing better, it's going to be a much bigger challenge against this defense, and it's something that going into further in the playoffs, I'm, I, I got a special eye on that one. I'm, I'm a little concerned about it. I want Joe Burrow to be upright, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like uh, upright quarterbacks. I wish uh, <laughs> number eight was playing for the Baltimore Ravens. You guys know the trend. Uh, no upright. Lamar, no me, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And, and I don't know why we thought a quarterback with torn ligaments was going to be making a quick bounce back in playing uh, in, in the regular season or the playoffs. But the running back, J.K. Dobbins, is the reason that I think the Baltimore Ravens are going to get 17 points at all. I have it 28 to 17. Uh, Bengals and not a close game, but if you're uh, looking at a game for daily fantasy purposes in weeks 14 through 17, J.K. Dobbins led the NFL in rushing, took week 18 off wow. because rest is good. It's something that huh. helps when, when you're not playing football uh, Brandon to, to be rested. Disagrees. Yeah. <laughs> Who? It's too sad. Let's not talk about that. Yeah, it's it's nice to have rest. Um, uh, and I think J.K. Dobbins is going to have a good week after a week of rest. You said no Lamar, no me. How about no Lamar, no la me? I mean, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I'm going <laughs> I'm going Bengals big time, 30 to 10. You know what could be interesting here to think about, though? All of these Ravens players who are going to be left behind by Lamar not playing, whether he's choosing to do it or because he's actually very much hurt. We were just discussing this in the commercial break. Um, you know, they might have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. The past few weeks, everyone has been, like, counting the Ravens out because they've not had Lamar Jackson as their quarterback. They've had backups. Um, I could see them play, playing a little bit into overdrive to be like, we're here too. We still got into the playoffs. Bengals Lamar's have been, been talking a lot of MIA trash the last two week. years. A lot of trash coming Who out of Cincinnati. The Bengals mm. talking that smack. But it is a bummer because otherwise this game is gold. Yeah. AFC North. I, I would have picked on. Baltimore. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, it's time for mistakes were made, folks. We got to do it. All right. Look, you pick almost 300 games. You're going to have some duds, some uh, blind spots. I couldn't figure out the Raiders for most uh, of the season. Who could? Greg was constantly wrong about the Jags. The Packers were not great for Patrick, but Cynthia. Uh, Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia. Literally every week, we would beg, plead. Greg would cry and just ask you to pick the Lions, and you refused. Die. Yes. <laughs> I don't have anything to say. Like, says, I'll do it again. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not, I don't. The Lions I, broke I would, the model this year. The Lions broke. Good. Thank you for breaking. If a team's going to do it, like Lions and Jets, it's a good one to Could have. Did you see yourself picking more Lions games next season? If they get better players, then yes. Wow. Draft well. Ooh. Draft well. Yeah. The Lions broke the model <laughs> and Cynthia broke their heart. Wow. I'll put that on a t shirt. I'll wear that. <laughs> Oy, oy, oy. Okay, NFL Knockout presented by Caesar Sportsbook is a free-to-play game on NFL.com. Win an exclusive <laughs> there he is. Yeah. 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 experience the 2023 Pro Bowl, the 2023 NFL Draft, or Super Bowl 57 weekly. Cool. Answer 10 questions about Sunday's games and top the leaderboards who win a trip of a lifetime. Visit NFL.com. That's in Lambo. That's, That's the best thing I've Lambo. ever seen. Up, play and win. That is super beautiful. Let that wow. happen in so far. We would never hear the end of it. Who says Let's he's not fair. a cold weather quarterback? Let's top be fair. ten QBs. I'm happy he won. Top ten QBs. Yeah. What is this guy gonna do? He's gonna say, "Let's go." <laughs> I think there's another word in the middle of there, but I'm gonna say it on television. <laughs> Tom Brady against the Cowboys. <laughs> Woo! This should be good. America's team up against. A man America. America's dream. <laughs> man America. <laughs>
Boy, he laid his body out to grab that thing and cradle it in. Prescott forced out of the pocket, throws upfield. It's intercepted. Picked off by Winfield. But a big time play by a big time player. Prescott's come out of the game and Cooper Rush has come in. Boy, oh boy. Talk about it just all going wrong. Tom Brady puts it in the air and Mike Evans reaching up, snatches it down with one hand. That is as good as it gets. It is time for In It to Win It, presented by Intuit TurboTax. We kicked off our very first show this year talking about Bucks Cowboys. It was a clean sweep for Tampa back in week one. Patrick, who do you like this time around? I like the Dallas Cowboys in this matchup, and there's been so much discussion about <laughs> Dak Prescott and his predilection for throwing interceptions. Uh, since Dak came back, he left that game in week one. The Cowboys have had the number one offense in the NFL. They've scored 32 points per game. I'm not worried about the interceptions, but what I do think that we will get is Dak running the ball in the postseason, especially considering the problems that the defense has had since early December when Anthony Brown uh, left that secondary. Dan Quinn has struggled uh, to replace him. They've gone to the streets uh, to pick up and sign <laughs> some guys to play cornerback. I think Dallas is going to score 25 points, and I think they're going to need every single one of them at a 25-24 win in Tampa. Ooh, sometimes the show is predictable, and it's me and Patrick defending Dak Prescott's <laughs> honors, digging while the rest of the country is zagging. I'm taking the Cowboys as well, 21 to 20. Dak Prescott's the best quarterback in this game. Like, it hurts me to say that as a, as a longtime Patriots fan and, and Brady fan, but Dak Prescott's average game is better than Brady's average game. Dak Prescott's best game is way better at this point than Tom Brady's best game. Uh, EPA per play since Dak Prescott returned. That's offensive efficiency. The Cowboys are fifth. The, the Bucks are 18th. I look at all the things Dak can do, not only with his legs, but before the snap, and I think he's not going to get pressured. And the numbers when Dak Prescott does not get pressured, and the Bucks do not have much, much of a pass rush since losing uh, Shaq Barrett, are outrageous. Dak Prescott gets it done. Well, so far, you guys have picked one-point wins, and I'll keep that trend going, but Ooh. the other side. Oh. The Bucks in this one, 24 to go. 23. Man America. There we go. He <laughs> is going to pass the ball to Mike Evans. You know why? Because Man America knows how to target <laughs> the correct corner, and Man America will find the corner that is not named Trayvon Dick. They have been getting guys off of the street, and Man America, mm. he will find the matchup for Mike Evans, and that will be the difference maker in this one. Those deep passes to him. We saw three touchdowns just two two weeks ago, and you know what? I think we see that again. Chris Godwin also very, very good, but Man America to Mike Evans, that's what I like to see. Okay, so for those of you that are just tuning in, I meant to call Tom Brady Mr. I America. I called him Man America <laughs> instead. And you know what? We're going to go with it. It's the it, best. It's gonna, Man it, America is great. It's a great nickname. No, it's a really good one. nickname. I'm, I'm on the box as well. I'm taking the box. Man I think America. 27 and 24. I think this might be a little bit higher scoring. It's Tom Brady. It's in Tampa. The, he has never lost to the Cowboys before. And after the bye, in this latter half of the season, after the Cowboys put up like a 50 burger on the Colts and then they were favored by a lot in that next game against the Texans. Remember we called it a cheese game. Don't take the cheese. Uh, they kept that game very close. They lost to the Jags. They lost to the Commanders. There's been some weird games for the Cowboys here in the second half of the season. There are holes, okay, and Brady is going to expose them. Man America all the way. Go Bucks go. Okay. It is time for more or less. Greg, Tony Pollard had his for, uh, first career 1,000-yard season. Will he have more or less than 45 and a half rushing yards? I'm going to say more because I'm going to try to speak this into existence. I know Mike McCarthy watches this show. Oh. Please, Tony Pollard is one of the best running backs in the league. Per play, efficiency, big plays, all of it. He can do it all. Ezekiel Elliott is not. And Ezekiel Elliott has not been playing as well over the last half of the season as he was early in the season. The whole point of Ezekiel Elliott was to keep Tony Pollard fresh for this game. And I think he will be. Uh, Patrick, this next question goes to you. If not for last week, week one would have been Dak's worst game of the season. Will he have more than 241 and a half passing yards? He will. And Greg brought it up uh, when he mentioned Shaq Barrett and Shaq Barrett's absence. Dak had no time. He also didn't have a thumb. Uh, had to leave the game uh, in that first matchup. I, I, I think Dak Prescott goes over 241. I think it's a solid game. Again, a, a one-point win, but I think Dak plays splendidly in all these questions, all the consternation in Dallas Sports Talk Radio. They, they have to find something else to complain about. <laughs> 
Okay, Sin, so my favorite prop of the season. I really lit up this morning when I heard this one. Mr. Man America, <laughs> Tom Brady, had a career low negative one yard rushing this year. <laughs> His longest run, two yards. Will he have more or less than half a what? yard rushing? Man America the gets the ship right. Let's he has go! more than half of a yard. Woo! Man America, he's not going to let that negative one oh, yard stand. Go. America doesn't it. stand for that. Man oh, America man. doesn't stand for that. And Tom Brady, half a rushing yard. By the way, oh. some sometimes that some people think that's maybe not the favorite for him to have more, but mm. those watch, people are wrong. One of the great QB sneakers of all time. Hey, oh. Come on, do you not like about? fun? Who, who doesn't like fun? I do hold Look at my the creativity. You could have like three whole rushing yards, guys, which is going to be a significant. Oh, oh he's goes. going to create here space goes. here. Here he goes. There it is. He, he's out of here. The wheel. Man America. I'm going to be watching for that. Uh, all right, the over under in Santa Clara this weekend is 42 and a half. Will the best defense in the NFL keep the score low? The four of us ain't so sure. <laughs> mm. Mm. Remember Matthew Stafford? He'll be back. Sure. Next year. Yeah. Want to stay up to date on the playoff race? Just tell Siri, show me football standings. Get your super wild card weekend started Saturday at noon and Sunday at 9 with NFL Game Day Morning. Despite the fact that Tom Brady has never lost to the Cowboys, Michael Irvin declared last week, We want Tom. Anybody. You can bet we'll have some fun with that this weekend. And on Saturday, as the 49ers start their quest to return to the Super Bowl, Andrea Kramer sits down with the Shanahans and McCaffreys to discuss their unique family ties. Plus, as Josh Allen prepares to face the Dolphins, he sits down with his former teammate, our own Emmanuel Sanders. Steelers defensive tackle Cam Hayward will join us in studio as well. Let's go! All that and much more Saturday at noon and Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Yeah, we will see you all weekend long. We can't wait. Only one game in Wild Card Weekend last year had fewer than 45 points. Three of the games this year are currently listed under that. Giants-Vikings expected to be the highest scoring of the games with the Chargers-Jags just behind at 47 and a half. Uh, let's play a little over-under. Let's uh, start with the first game of the weekend. Seahawks-Niners over-under is 42. I've got 27 to 20. I am going over this. 49ers defense is very good. The Seahawks defense is not. 49ers are going to put up points. That means Geno's just going to have to sling it. You know he's going to just have to ball out, Greg. He's still the best quarterback in this game. That's one of the reasons I've got the pillow out. Like, what, I don't have this pillow out to go under. Uh, the running game might be a bigger factor in the rain, but I still think both of these offenses uh, can get it done. We go over. I still have over. I think 42 and a half is too low. I think it's going to be around 45 points in this matchup. I'm with you. The rain does bring everything down just a little bit, but not too much. The run game is strong for both teams. Yeah, the rain's not enough to bring me down. Let's make it unanimous. <laughs> oh, I love uh, this. Seahawks are going to score yeah. more than people would expect. And, yes, the 49ers and the Seahawks run defense uh, do not work out well for Seattle. So, yes, over, over, over. Love it. Okay, Chargers-Jags is up next, 47 and a half. That's pretty high, and I am going over. First playoff game in Jacksonville since 2017. 70,000 people are going to watch Herbert versus Lawrence. The, the, it's the game of hair, folks. Okay, buy in. Yeah, I'm going out. I'm buying in that it'll be a great game, but I think it's going to be a defensive game. I don't really trust Joe Lombardi, the Chargers offensive coordinator, to out-scheme his opponent, but I do trust Brandon Staley. We've picked on him this week for making some bad decisions and who was playing last week. He knows he's got to come up with a beautiful game plan. He is good at doing that, coming up with one plan to slow down Trevor Lawrence, low-scoring game, under. You talk about that, but I think we go – He's going to come up with a good plan. We'll probably see more man defense, but it's still going to go over. This game, you got to remember, we've seen Doug Peterson figure this one out, and we've seen these teams score, so I'm going over in this one. Yeah, I think Brandon Staley is a good coach, but I feel like if he had a secret plan to stop the run, he would have used it at some point in 2022. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've, I've got not this. about the run. Oh, we'll see. We will see. Over. <laughs> <laughs> Look there. Uh, all right. Uh, finally, Giants Vikings 48 and a half. I am going under 48 and a half is high. Close game expected, as the experts <laughs> say. This just doesn't really scream a high scoring game to me. 
I totally disagree. I'm going with the foam finger here, old school. I think it goes way over. I trust both of these offenses more than I trust the defenses. I know I said Kirk Cousins is going to get hit a lot in this game, but I think it's going to be a game where there's a lot of passing to keep up with each other. I feel great about this. Ben? I, no? Uh, uh. Under. I'm go I mean, you can feel great about it. That's good. I like Justin Jefferson. I think he's really valuable, but I think that this one comes down to I mean, we saw Daniil Hunter, like, really – give it to Evan Neal last time. So I think under, I think it's going to be a lot of defense in this one. Yeah, to get all the points they had, both teams had to combine for 28 points in the fourth quarter. Last time it was 16-10 going into that. I, I, I'm taking under as well. Uh, all right, that's that. Coming up, we are going to write some things down. Ooh. Some things that we are feeling very confident. Very. Oh, is somebody taking Josh Allen? Give me more points, is what he said. <laughs> I thought we were going to see the, like, the walk. Ah! <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Write this down. It's coming up next. It's been 2,190 days. Dude, Rihanna, we waited it's for you. It's been over six years since the nine-time Grammy winner Rihanna dropped her last album. Everybody Riri, where have it. you been? We've been impatiently waiting for the last time we, we got Rihanna. The fans just predicted the end of the album. Everybody has got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. performance is going to be the best of all time. Literally, the best concert I've ever been to in my life is Rihanna. But real quick, before we get into this, write this down. What is your favorite halftime performance? Ooh. And you wouldn't have had to be there, Okay, Greg. okay. Which one have I been to? I mean, also my favorite concert I've ever been to, Prince. Prince was incredible. Prince was incredible. I saw him at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. Like, amazing and best half. Patrick, do you have a favorite halftime? Yeah, I, I've only, I got to go to the one across the street. It was pretty good. I, I loved, I loved everything. I get Should it. we go the rest of the show without talking about Patrick's sweater? N yeah, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> what sweater? What? Oh, wait, what? Oh, this? Uh, oh, this sorry, guys. Oh, this? Little, little this season? old thing. I took the oh cheese. <laughs> I want that. It's like delicious. I guess I gotta go with the obvious choice though for a concert. What is it? It's Janet Jackson, right? That was like a great moment. <laughs> I owe Greg $20. Uh, <laughs> best concert's gonna be this one coming up. Brianna, I'm calling it right now. Okay, it is time for Write This Down for Super Wild Card Weekend. I'm going Gino here. I'm okay. going Gino all the way, baby. That tough 49ers defense, like I said, you know it's gonna be in the rain. Okay, listen, people wrote him off. He hasn't written back yet, and he plans to write back this weekend. They can, they can surprise us here, is it's all, it's all I'm saying. Back, I'm with you. You Go can Gino. write back from the Pro Bowl. Oh, where, okay. Whoa, Excuse whoa, you. Whoa, I'm just saying whoa. he made the Pro Bowl. That's where he can be writing back. Still going to be in trying to support you. Maybe he'll make the Super Bowl. I don't think the Ravens are going to win, but I think their defense is going to play great. So I'm going to go Bengals under 25 and a half points this weekend. Since Roquan Smith showed up, this group is tough. And one thing I love about the playoffs, just the physicality that some of these defenses bring is on another level. And I think Baltimore is going to be that defense. It's a division matchup. Back-to-back -back weeks, third time this year. These teams know each other well. I just think this is going to be a defensive game. That number is way too high for me. Well, you can say under things if you want. I'm going to say <laughs> Dawson Knox over everything. I like the reception. Whoa. I like the yards. Heck, I even like the touch. Give it to me. Oh, heck. Listen, I, heck, we, we went with heck. I should say Jesus Christ in there, too. Like, you even thanked God. Don, right? Dawson Knox, new man America. <laughs> Dawson Knox, new man America. Or Jonathan Moxon, either way. Love it. Have it. Uh, I have said a, a couple times uh, today that the Chargers run defense is not very good. And then I saw that some people thought perhaps 78 and a half y rushing yards against the Chargers was the number for Travis Etienne. I say he's going to do better than that because, again, I'm glad to be able to work with LaDainian Tomlinson in his MVP season. He didn't average 5.4 yards per carry. The Chargers give that up to everybody. Yes, take Travis Etienne. Way over 78 and a half. You know what just made, just really made, makes me laugh right now? It's like we're the show leading into the big show on NFL Network. You know, a couple of you guys just tuned in. You're getting ready for the big pregame. And then there's this guy sitting yeah, it, here. Trying yeah. to make a serious I football like pizza. point. We're journalists. Someone should just go over and take a bite. A wise man once said to me, pizza, pizza. <laughs> Enjoy the games. Enjoy Wild Card Weekend. We will see you guys next week. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.